Hi, I'm Gwe, one of the developers of Unspottable. As part of the Steam Summer Festival in June 2020, we released the first playable demo of our game. Uh, it was very exciting and now it's very interesting to have a look at the in-game analytics we gathered from people playing the game um, outside of PlayStation, so without us being here. We thought we would do a short video to explain how we are visualizing this data and how it helps us improve the game. Hopefully that can help some of the indie devs out there and we can get feedback from a more experienced game studio on uh, what tools they use for game analytics and uh, on some key data points that we are not gathering and we should. Um, I'll add links in the description to a tutorial on how to set up the tools I'm using in this video and some links to the Unspotable Steam page and trailer so you can have a bit of uh, context if you don't know the game on uh, what this data means. I'll also link to our Twitter and Discord if you want to come and have a chat about game analytics or questions or feedbacks in this video. Uh, so first we have um, kind of general game analytics, 1600 games played during the festival. Um, that was quite good because there's a lot of games to try during uh, six days of the festival. So we're glad uh, some people played it so we can have a look at the data now. And Spotable is multiplayer only. So we just uh, gathered um, the player counts to three or four and the game duration. Uh, I think these stats are a bit skewed during the festival because a lot of people on their own might just download the game because they like the key art or the concept and just wanted to have a quick look. So um, a lot of games with two people and uh, some very short game because they might just have a little try and stop. Uh, some pretty long games as well, about two hours. So some people enjoyed the game, that was good. Um, we have other generic stats about uh, the amount of games per day and per hour and uh, where in the world, country or city they were, they were played. Uh, this is not too relevant right now for the festival, but that's going to be so useful um, later down the road when we have demos on the long term or the full release of the game to see the effect of uh, marketing campaigns in different countries. Um, and this play against stat is the number of people who are reaching the end of the demo. Uh, they were given three options, go to Steam, uh, leave, play again, uh, and 70% uh, of the players did play again, so we're really happy with that. It probably means the demo was fairly well balanced and people were not too bored by the end, so they wanted to play again. Uh, on top of this, we have some analytics a bit more specific to our game. So uh, about 20,000 robots punched, uh, not all that useful, but it's just quite a nice high number, so I quite enjoyed these stats. Um, the spread of levels, so what levels were the most played and the least played. This one is a tutorial, so we expected a lot of people to skip it, so just to not replay it again if they play a second time. Uh, so we were very happy with these spreads, uh, just a bit surprised by Prison being the least played, because um, the team at least really enjoys this, uh, the gameplay of this level, so we might uh, try to investigate a bit more why people didn't replay it as much, uh, maybe they didn't understand the, the, the concept uh, that well. Um, this is the avatar that was selected, so at the moment there's only six. It showed us that the dinosaur is a favorite one, so we're probably going to um, add a few more, uh, a bit more like this one. Uh, we had a little internal race, because Unspotable is made by three three people, and uh, we all had a, an avatar representing ourselves in the game. And mine was the most selected, uh, not by that far, but I um, was quite glad about this. If you do play the game, please pick the grumpy character with the beard, because that's me, and I want this stat to go up. Uh, this is just showing the number of robot punch per city, so it doesn't really tell us much about the game, but it's just so interesting to be able to, to dig in this data and uh, cross-reference any stats per location or per time. Uh, we, I'm sure we'll have a, a lot more graphs like this to, to have a look at. Um, we also gathered uh, specific analytics per level. So Meadow is a simple level. I'll show little videos here of the gameplay of the level so you can understand. Um, we gathered the minimum average and maximum playtime for each level. Uh, they were very similar for all of them, so we were really happy about this. And uh, about one minute per level, which is kind of what we were expecting. So all that worked pretty well. Uh, it kind of uh, validated the, the gameplay of, of the levels we decided to add in the demo. Um, the gym level has a specific gameplay mechanic where all the robots punch um, when the instructor tells them to. So we this stats is uh, the number of players that have been punched by robots, which is one in three game. 
So I think that's good. So that means uh, players kind of knew to avoid the robots, but they were not always able to. So I think that's fairly well balanced. Uh, personally, I'd like it to be a bit higher because I like uh, the challenge and, uh, and the frustration of getting punched by robots because players lose points. But overall, that's quite balanced. So we're happy with that. Um, these are very specific. The, so there's an instructor that uh, tells the robots to punch and uh, 50 players have been punched by the instructor, which is a bit surprising because it doesn't move. So to get punched by the instructor, you have to be in front of him and just wait for the punch to come. So maybe just 50 curious players or just a bit unlucky. And this one is how many times the coach has been punched, which is something we anticipated. So you can punch the coach and then he will stop giving instructions and that kind of uh, nullify the gameplay of the level a bit. We didn't expect it to happen that often, so this will probably push us to change the mechanic a bit and when the coach gets punched, he will probably stand back up after a few seconds and start giving instructions again, so the level can, uh, the gameplay of this level can keep going without being too distracted by this. Um, we also had the prison level in the demo. Um, in this one, there are big buttons on the floor that player can walk on to turn off the lights. Uh, and this has been used about twice per level, so that's a uh, really good stat. We think the players understood that really well uh, and did use it to, to hide again in the crowd. So this kind of um, makes us think the level is well designed. It hasn't been played as much, so we are going to investigate why maybe other things of the gameplay are a bit more unclear, so people didn't want to play it again. The last level of the demo was Sushi Shop, where there's our side quests of collecting sushi. Uh, if you collect four sushi, you can leave the restaurants and win the level. Um, this seemed to be quite well understand, a lot of sushi collected. Um, 700 people out of uh, 1600 games collected all four, all four sushi, so uh, completed the side quest. So that means it's very doable, but not that easy, because uh, often they got punched before. And uh, this shows that after collecting four sushi, players have to reach the exit and they got punched right before. So and for the time, some players have been really frustrating because they were just about to win and uh, they lost at the last second. So I'm glad this happened a few times. The other mechanic in Sushi is a distract. So a little bit like the lights turning off in the prison level, uh, you can press a button and the camera will zoom on a mouse uh, running around in the restaurant so you can hide again. So you can punch a few times, collect sushis, and then use this to hide again in the crowd. Um, it, each player can use it twice uh, per round in Sushi shop and um, it's only been used uh, less than once per level so uh, we're not too happy about this stat. I mean players didn't use it as much as they should maybe they didn't know it was there or they didn't understand what it was doing so we are definitely going to review um, how to make this uh, mechanic more clear so that was a few examples on how we use the analytics to improve the game I hope uh, you found this video useful and you'll come on Twitter or Discord to discuss game analytics. Thank you.